Hi guys, this is Simeon from Swedish Homestead. It's time for us to make some candles on ourselves. This is the first time for us. But before we go to the actual making of the candles, in this video I would like to share with you what you need and what we are using and what we are planning on making exactly. By no means experts but we have done some research and our neighbors are big beekeepers they actually have over 200 beehives and at times they produce um, 10 tons of honey a year and more and so we've gone to them and talked with them and they really know what they're doing so of course when you want to make beeswax candles you need beeswax and like I said, our neighbors, they have a lot of bees and I was able to buy a two and a half kilo um, clump piece of beeswax from him and we will be able to get more now in January, February is where he takes care of his wax and we'll be able to get more. So two and a half kilo, about five pounds. And this is uh, very dirty as you can see, this is not very clean. So the first thing we'll have to do is to actually filter this through some kind of old towel or old pillowcase or something like that. And I will, we will walk you through this as we are gonna do this. Um, you will obviously have to heat it up first. Um, we'll have a separate pot for that, but we'll heat it up. And we want to heat it up to about um, 80 degrees, 85 degrees Celsius. I believe that's about 185 degrees Fahrenheit. And once, specifically we want to have it a little warmer because in the whole pouring it through the filter, it'll cool down a bit. When we pour it, it doesn't need to be this warm. And then we'll filter it and it'll end up in this pot. And in this pot will just be water, hot water. And this pot will be heated by the hot water and that will just create a very um, nice and even heat and um, the melted wax will be in here at about 70 degrees Celsius. We are not gonna make 100% pure beeswax candles. We've done some research and we've looked into it and we've also had beeswax candles before from our neighbors. And one thing that we have found is that uh, beeswax burns fairly hot and um, you, you, you have to work with the wick, uh, wick sizes but, but still, most of the time, a pure beeswax candle, just the, the, the flame, the, the candle tunnels into the wax and you have a lot of wax left standing on the sides. And we don't really want that. We want it to burn nicely everywhere. So what we're going to do is, we're gonna put some um, pure organic coconut oil into the beeswax and for one pound of beeswax, we're gonna use a half a cup of coconut oil in the mixture and we have read online on a website that um, that gave the best results for that particular person and we want to try that one thing is that you also might be wondering why would you make your own candles candles are so cheap to buy and everything and well partially we think it's really fun to do this and through our neighbors we have uh, beeswax available but the other thing is that um, you know, when we were looking into this, we found out that um, candles are actually very, very unhealthy. And the exhaust from those candles is really, really bad for you. There are lots of articles on the internet, you can actually look into that. They, they make your air in the house very unhealthy and, and some of the heavy metals that these candles actually, um, you know, um, put into the air, they are way higher than the, the limits of what is, what is legal and what every, any human should um, have to encounter. So beeswax on the other side does the opposite. It's not just that it's not bad for you, it actually is very, very good for you. And what happens is when the beeswax candles burn, they create negative ions and they're not negative at all in the sense of the influence they have on us, they're actually very, very good for us because the positive ions in the air, they're very bad for us. 
So the name negative and positive there is not really how we would understand it, right? And and how you can explain this the most, we all uh, the the best I believe is uh, the example of a thunderstorm. We have all been in thunderstorms before, and you know before the thunderstorm, right before it, it's humid and it's uh, you know you just don't feel well. You so often get a headache and everything, and that's among other things. The reason for that is that there is such an extremely high concentrated amount of positive ions in the air during that time. And then after the thunderstorm, it's the opposite. The air is so clear and so fresh and you just feel so much better after the thunderstorm has passed through. And um, by a forest, by a waterfall, um, there are also more negative ions and you just feel better. The positive ions, when they are just concentrated a lot, you know, through dust and pollution and allergens and all of that, they can just make you tired, depressed, um, you, you just don't feel well. And, and that's a problem, especially in houses where the air doesn't come in and, and where this can neutralize itself. So, there are different things, there are plants and, and, and salt uh, lights and stuff like that, but beeswax candles are one of the things that create negative ions naturally and the, these things are going airborne and they are hitting the positive ions and they, they neutralize them and then they actually fall to the ground or to the closest surface instead of being airborne and you breathe them in and by breathing them in you would get it right into your bloodstream, they're small enough and that's why you get sick. So I just find this amazing that um, we have something again provided by, uh, by the creator in creation that is beneficial for us, healthy for us, and where we humans have taken um, a waste product that creates exhaust and made money from it and, and created those candles. So that's one reason why we really want to get these beeswax candles. Not only are they not harmful, they're actually very helpful. So let me just show you what we are going to do here. And we are going to make three different kinds of candles. We're going to make tea lights. Um, these are just very handy. We just love to put them in a little jar on top of a cupboard or a table or something. We're going to make these lights that are that we're going to use for Advent. So we're going to make four four of these um, candles for Advent. We are a little late. First of Advent is already passed, but um, better late than never. And we're gonna make a few to just have them. And then obviously the normal candle size that you just put um, anywhere on your table. These are silicone forms and we are gonna pour them in there and then they have to cool and then you can take them out. We didn't wanna make um, dipped candles. I just think they look like a cricket carrot and um, we just want to try this and see how it works for us. So let me show you how this is going to work for us. Okay, so I would like to show you. This here is the silicone form. The reason why it's cut all the way to the middle is because that's where the wick is going to go in. You make a knot, pull it through in the middle and then you take one of these little sticks here that are being held together with a rubber band, put it over, put the wick through, and um, that'll keep it into place exactly in the middle. Now, in this, so the form doesn't get open when you pour the wax in, you will put lots of these rubber bands around that will keep it in position and closed. Um, and then you need to let it cool. Okay, so that, that's basically what you do. One, once it's cool, you take it out. Um, you can cut off the, the wick on the bottom here and you have your candle. Now, there are a few very, very important things to consider for your candle to burn well. One of them is, I mentioned it already, um, if you use pure beeswax or if you use a mixture. And we are going to put in a little coconut oil, a half a cup of coconut oil on a pound of beeswax. That will make the candle 
not burn as hot and it'll burn a little quicker and, and more even, otherwise it'll tunnel through. Another thing that's really important to consider is that the wick sizes are different for different kinds of candles. So we have this candle, for example, which will need a thinner wick and this one that will need a thicker one. Otherwise, the flame will be too small, it won't burn equally. The same here, it'll be too big and it'll melt the whole surface and drip on the sides. So that's the second aspect. At this, as well as this wig is woven and it kind of, if you look at it close up, it's like in a V shape and that V needs to be open towards the top. So obviously you have two ends on this and I think it's gonna to be too small for the camera to see this, but um, the V needs to be pointing up for this to burn the right way. So you have um, the, the wax mixture you have the you have the thickness of the wig and you have that that you put this in the right way those are the three things that are really important to consider on how your candle will be burning now our tea lights they already come with these uh, pre-made little wigs so it's going to be really easy for us to just put them in there and then pour them full Otherwise, you know, it would take so long to just have a silicone form and, and pour it, let it cool, pour it for, for these little candles. That would just be so much work. So here are the things that um, we are using and that you need to pour your own candles. The beeswax, we have the organic coconut oil that we will um, mix together with the beeswax. The wig, the sticks that hold the wig into place, the actual form with the rubber bands to put around and the pots to keep the to, to melt the wax and keep it at the right temperature before you pour it. Those are the things and I hope you will join us for the next video where we will be making the candles and um, this is very exciting for us. As I said the first time we are very excited and hope it'll go really well. Thank you, see you in the next video, subscribe and you'll get a notification when the next video will come out and you will, won't miss anything. Thanks and bye-bye.